Thank you very much for coming, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, let's make a start. Um, I have to say I was a bit sort of uh, perturbed by being asked to give a speech at uh, Diversity and Inclusion Week, but um, as I thought more about it, it sort of gave me an opportunity to relive my time at BMP Paribas and how things have changed. So actually it's been quite cathartic for me in that respect because it's coming back to some of the old things. But what I should do at the beginning is, uh, as with all good compliance events, give you a disclaimer that these are my personal views, not necessarily those of the firm, and probably represent the sort of random thoughts that are going through my brain and manifesting in various forms as I give this presentation. And in case I say something stupid, because obviously some of the aspects are an HR minefield, um, if I say anything stupid, I own it. The stupidity is mine, not yours. So. It's mine. Okay, um, there's a tremendous amount being going on um, on diversity and comp compliance, and I suppose the question is, why, why should we be interested in compliance and diversity and inclusion? Um, shouldn't actually, in compliance, everybody be clones of each other, all the same? All compliance officers act, make the same decisions, think the same way, because life would be so much simpler if that were the case, but actually, would it be right? because would we just end up rather insular and narrow-minded? So some might think that's the right way to start, but I think we should challenge that and think again. Now in the UK, there's obviously a lot already being done, a lot of initiatives, and there's two particular high-profile appointments at the moment, the UK Head of Territory, uh, Anne-Marie Verstraten, and the UK Head of HR, Louise Fitzgerald Lombard. Um, in addition, there's the Diversity and Inclusion Council, which picks up a number of senior business members. Far-reaching diversity and inclusion education program at all levels, Diversity Week, benchmarking to get us into the top 100 employers for Stonewall. Uh, it's embedded into our recruitment and um, attraction practices that we use to talk to agencies and go to universities etc and we have a talent program which particularly looks at ensuring that diversity is included in identifying talent for the future we have um, employee networks again which help to uh, encourage the diversity and inclusion mixed city cultural pride parent and carers ability and early careers which are open to all staff and we also sponsor externally some events, the um, Black British Business Awards, the London Indian Film Festival, and London Pride. So there's a tremendous amount going on, but I guess we would question how much of that perhaps impacts in compliance. Now, once upon a time, compliance used to be a bit like this. Um, I'm the compliance <coughs> officer. What I say is right, you don't challenge me. Um, I'm think, I've been here 10 years, and if I think back 10 years ago, um, the compliance department was probably a pretty, pretty small team of 20 or so people, um, made up of probably rather sad accountants and lawyers, all of who thought the same. I can say that reasonably safely because there, there's only, I think, two other people left in the department who've been here as long as I have, and neither of them are in the room, so they shouldn't be embarrassed by what I'm saying. Um, so it was really quite a, I say, like-minded group. Um, perhaps given the size of the department, it was inevitable that it was reactive rather than proactive. So we reacted in the same way to things. Um, it wasn't so much tone at the top as well from the head of department. It was orders from the top. You do it this way and this is the way you do it. And if you don't do it this way, it's wrong. So there was no real thought of challenge or questioning the, the, the approach to the business, and hence this kind of approach, this kind of uh, language was almost inbuilt into what we said and did. Uh, we had the say on things, we didn't really listen to others, and we just acted. Now, of course, that was the model at the time. We were not unique, that was, that was within the city. Regulation was in a very different place. Uh, bear in mind it was probably still self-regulation in those days. So it's what you chose to do rather than necessarily what you were required to do by the regulator. So a very different space. If I can get this to work. Right. So we've grown in size. 
We were 24, I think, when I joined. We're 117 now. So that approach that we had before certainly wouldn't work with that number of people, leaving aside all the things that else have changed. In the time, the way in which uh, regulation, the environment, the business has developed means that the skills required of compliance officers are completely different now from what they were uh, 10 years ago. We do require specialist teams. They need specialist skills. They need interpersonal skills to deal with the business, to discuss, talk to them, elicit views and uh, information around transactions and practices that are going on. Time management skills. We're constantly having to reprioritize work. Uh, we think we've got a full schedule every day, but then there's other things come along and all of that has to be rejigged and um, reprogrammed and the business need to be told their things are not going to get done in the speed that they thought they were. And experience. You've got to have some basis on which to make decisions based on what's happened before. Now, you won't have all that experience yourself, so you do have to reach out to others within the department and talk to them and establish what is the right approach, what is the right response. And that very process of reaching out is part of diversity and inclusion. It's that building um, the willingness to talk, to share, to speak up around things that are happening within the business. We've developed our existing talent, obviously, as all of those requirements have changed. We've uh, trained and encouraged and nurtured some of the people who've remained during that period and some who've joined. And we've also recruited externally in line with our diversity and inclusion strategy to bring in different talents, different views, to challenge what we currently do and to look at how things can be done better. We also support mobility. Uh, we've had a number of moves from front and back offices and also within compliance and that brings tremendous diversity and inclusion benefits because it brings a different view of our organisation from somebody who may be on the receiving end of compliance or who has some peripheral um, activities that touch on compliance and they form a view. You know, we've had people come from the front office into, I won't name them names because that wouldn't really, but um, just to highlight, we've had people from front office come into compliance, people from middle office, from back office, from IG, from HR, and we've had mobility within the department, people moving out of the control room into advisory, from central compliance into uh, desk uh, reviews, uh, compliance assurance. So there's a lot of movement going on there. Um, that all helps in the way in which we uh, exchange views, the way in which we communicate with each other and we recognize that everybody brings something to the table. I mean, I think one of the big developments we've had this year is the graduate intake. The fact that we're bringing in people who have possibly very little experience of compliance, but actually when you get them in a meeting and you're talking through things, their voice and their view of things is very refreshing and very um, valuable in that debate. They bring something a tremendous amount of compliance, actually, when you get down to it, is common sense. And the ability to add that external common sense view is incredibly valuable because otherwise you get too um, embroiled in a particular issue and you lose sight of what is the common sense approach to take here. So tremendous <coughs> benefits we're getting now from having that diverse group of people. I always encourage... Um, in any meetings we're in for people to speak up. You see people sitting there, you can sense they disagree with what's being said, but they then, you know, what is troubling you? Why, come on, you, you must have something to say here. I can see you don't agree to get that out of them because that way they have the confidence to speak up. But obviously I suspect what they're saying is probably pretty valuable, but they're, they're not sharing it. So it is that development of an environment where Inclusion, everybody's view has a value and everybody should feel comfortable in speaking up. Now, this is something that has been brought through with our diversity and inclusion program, but obviously regulators are getting pretty uh, hot on it now. The investigations that I've sat through, particularly in FX and the remediation program, has highlighted the sort of subcultures and cliques that exist, obviously primarily in the front office, but 
how dangerous that can be where there's an allegiance across a group of people that has nothing to do with the firm and they feel that certain practices and behaviours become acceptable within that group. We don't have that kind of arrangement obviously within compliance but the very fact that <clears throat> within those groups, those subcultures, people don't challenge, they accept a particular modus operandi, the fact that we don't do that within compliance and will challenge each other and question what, it's a healthy debate. So that really is all I wanted to say and really what I wanted to do was open, the, open it up to questions because um, I think it is important that we share our experiences, we share the views that we have and that we communicate those to each other in an open open environment. Has anybody got any challenges or questions they want to throw at me? No? Well, if you do later, then don't hesitate. So, let me just get this to work, which is proving problematic. So, to conclude, simply put, diversity means difference, it's the mix. We are all diverse, nobody is the same, so it's bringing that group together. Different groups offer different skills and that improves the way in which we work, the advice we give and second level controls, adding value and strengthening the control environment. We all contribute to that. Inclusion is a mindset to ensure we get the mix working well. It's about valuing that diversity, so when people do speak up, you encourage them, you don't dismiss them as uh, irrelevant, you listen and give thought to what they're saying. You bring people to the table, ensuring everybody's voice is heard. Behaviours to ensure we include everyone in our activities. It's the, in those meetings that you have the opportunity to get people to speak up. And the business case, obviously, leaving aside uh, creativity, innovation, avoids this group think, this subculture. The brand reputation improves, people perform better because they contribute and actually it helps us attract and retain the best talent. You know, particularly within compliance, it's, as Paul I'm sure will attest given his uh, HR experience, compliance recruitment is a very small world. It's a small pool of people that we're drawing from and if there's good or bad views about the compliance department, it's, it's usually out there already. So to create a, an environment where people feel valued, speak up and are listened to obviously has great benefits to us um, in our recruitment. <coughs> okay, that was all I had to say. Thank you very much for coming. And we do actually have quite a few breakfasts at the back. So <laughs> take one for yourself and however many others you feel you can do. All right, thanks. Thank